Hello, everybody. Episode 20 of the Ball Guy Show starts in 30 seconds. Hello, everybody. Episode 20 is on. This episode is brought to you by Warrior Law. Man, if you have gotten into a car accident and in, in Florida and you need a good attorney, I recommend Kevin Guerrero. He's a buddy of mine. Let him know JC sent you. All right. His information will be on the description of this episode. Uh, guys, this guest that I have today is a good buddy of mine. He is, I've been friends with him for a number of years, and he's a brother in Christ. We served in the same church, back in Vertical Church, back when I lived in, in Florida, and we've been friends since. All right, um, and let's hear his story. Let's bring him on. Dennis, what is up, my brother? That is Enrique well, God bless you, brother. What a pleasure, man, to be part of episode 20. Shout out to all the listeners out there. Todos los que están escuchando, un fuerte abrazo. Are we going to do this in Spanish or English? Is that good? And we can do it bilingual. This has been an right. English episode, man. Hey, first Let's bilingual do episode. I don't mind, bro. Whatever, hey, whatever the Lord leads us, it's cool, man. Yo, whatever it's yo, cool. yo le, yo le speak all the English también, así que let's do that. <laughs> Spanish, un poquito, un poquito cubano también le voy a tirarle también si quieres. Ah, so, sí, sí, es que eso no, puede, right, man. eso no puede faltar, eso no puede faltar. O sea, tiene que, you gotta go back to your roots, man. You know? <laughs> eso que se habla acá en Miami, Lauderdale. Hey, yeah, that would never leave me, man. I that's what those are my roots, man. I'm from originally, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Florida, I'm from Miami. You know, yeah. that was born and raised in Miami, little Havana. Wow. Not just, not just for, little Havana. I was translation, the, Pequeña Havana, Pequeña Havana. See, si, La Pequeña Havanita, La Pequeña Havana, Yo está Cuba, La Calle Ocho. Calle that's Ocho. me. Yeah. No, no, eso <laughs> es mucha historia ahí, hay mucha historia. Todavía oh, cada vez que uno pasa ahí por la calle 8, uno puede eh, sentir ese aprecio. Bueno, eh, fue la, yo digo que eso fueron la, las raíces latinas que empezaron en este, en este estado, ¿no? Ahí mismo, en la yeah, pequeña, yeah. en la calle 8. Ahí, sí, señor. Sí, señor. And you pass by, you, you feel Celia, you, you sense, you, 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 can know, you know, Celia Cruz pasó por ahí, estaba ahí wow. Celia Cruz, estaba ahí todo lo, yo, legendary people, man, legendary Latino, sí, mucha, eso cuando hacían esos tiempos, puedo decir que eran los años eh, hasta early 2000s, um, the 90s, 80s. O sea, era, quería ver las orquestas de, en el género que a uno le gusta, pues, ¿no? De la salsa. Eh, ibas a la calle 8 durante, bueno, ya este marzo 10 ya va a ser el festival, pero ya no es lo mismo. O sea, eso, eso ha cambiado porque esa. esa esos buenos tiempos de traer las orquestas ya no ya no está ¿no? pero a otro lado no, ¿sí o no? la música también ha cambiado la música ha cambiado verdad sí, señor. que oye que que to me honestly music is not the same I can't I don't no, like no. listening to the radio bro I don't I, like listening to the radio no. honestly I don't think, I, don't think I, will, I cannot disagree with I cannot disagree with you because the, I can definitely agree with you 100 it has changed ya no es cuestión de ya no es cuestión de la parte poética, la parte de lo que se llama la lírica, ha cambiado su bastante, bastante. Hoy en día son tres, cuatro letras y memorízate porque eso es lo que va a pegar en la radio o en, la, o en las redes sociales. Tienes razón, tienes razón. Yeah. Bueno, before, uh, before we continue with that, talk to me, man. I, tell me about your background. I know you personally. We, we, we know each other, but let's, you know, okay. But we've known each other for years. We we served side by side. We served oh, the we served at church. You know, we, we we served with each other at church and vertical church. So we've known each other for a number of years. And you're dear to my heart. You are dear to my heart. Your son is dear to my heart. 
Gio, I love Gio to death. Um, <laughs> so before we get into that, though, uh, let's 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 educate the, the listeners on you. Let's hear about your background, where you're from, you know, and and how you get into music, man. Yeah, well, no, my name is Dennis Enrique. Um, I'm originally from Ecuador, South America. Those of you that do not know Ecuador is what they call the equator. It's the line that crosses in between Quito and basically it's the middle, they call it the middle of the world. I was born there in 1975. I immigrated into this country in 1983 at eight years old. Um, and ever since, the music has always been part of our background. Um, for those of you who are Ecuadorian or know Latin music, Julio Jaramillo is one of the biggest artists that came from Ecuador. And he was the one that basically, if we look at, you know, Puerto Rico has many artists that have, you know, made names from, you know, to the island of Puerto Rico. But Ecuador had this one guy, and it was Julio Jaramillo. He was very, um, he brought what they call uh, Esencia de, de Guitarras, de Trios, para can come and sing to to the world to spread his 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 um his music, most of his music was mainly dedicated to uh, the love scenes and being left alone and things like that. And but he also had some great music, you know, that he made to our country and to and to and to our families. Um, so that's where I come from. I I I came to this country back in 1983. And getting to the music scene, it's always been there, but as uh, getting into the salsa scene, um, yeah, I blame the Colombians. <laughs> I blame the, the people from Cali <laughs> to the heart. The people from Cali really got me into it. In fact, yesterday we were talking about one of one of the guys that did that. Uh, if you're listening, you know, uh, DJ Carlos Ramos, better known as DJ Caliche. He was a which is my person. which is my wife's cousin. Yeah, it is. And, and and it's the we, course, just, huh? we just found out yesterday that that I just yeah. found out yesterday that that was um, you know that there was oh, a yes. connection there, and um, you know, DJ Caliche was the one who, who I used to bug because he showed me. I remember going to his dad's house when we were in high school. We would skip school. I don't recommend to do that, and <laughs> just being able to be there and go over and. Cajoncito, me acuerdo el cajón de, del tío Dimas, and finding out, and I used to find a lot of things there from who I, I would consider one of my favorite singers and salsa right, um, singers and, and entertainers in Oscar de Leon. And yes. I would just record and imitate and basically um, inherit all of his um, music. Um, dynasty that he was able to bring to 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 us so Oscar de Leon which was the first salsa singer that I really looked up to because I used to listen to the music back in the days in Ecuador but Carlos brought that to life brought that to life uh, when I heard it again at the age of at the age at that time I think I was 16 17 years old and ever since we we have developed a beautiful friendship till today you know, we don't see each other as much, but we definitely speak a lot, and we always trash each other in basketball. So it's just a beautiful connection to understand that well, you're now involved because you're a sports fan too. <laughs> I love sports, man. Uh, and and man, and I know Calitos and Carlos, Carlos Eduardo, Carlos Andres, and his wow, brothers. Carlos Andres. They all. I know. I know the cousins. They get together. They play a lot of basketball. They play yes. soccer. They play a lot of soccer. Yeah, they're really into soccer. They're <laughs> yes, yes. They, they love soccer, and um, yes. but they, they I know they do get together play basketball. And Carlos and Pablo, yes, yes, Carlos and Pablo, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, and Junior, uh, Junior, yes. yeah, Big junior. so they all get together. I know they all get together play basketball, and uh, I always wanted to. Well, remember we used to have the, the life group, the the small group that we used to play basketball on Saturdays. Right. I always try to get them to come over. They never were able, they, that we were no, we could never. The schedules never. We were never able to get together. They were, get, they were right. never clinched. So, but I always wanted to play basketball with them. Like I knew that I knew they played basketball. But oh, anyway, that's was, awesome. Man. I was, 
we used to we used to get it together every Thanksgiving. We call it the turkey ball, and be able to get together with your family members, with Carlos, Andres, Pablo, uh, Caliche, uh, Dieguito, Junior, uh, Diego. Man, my wife, that's yeah. my wife and Diego are so close, man. Yeah, she yeah. loves all her cousins. What she, a as, as a matter of fact, what a they have. They have, as a matter of they have a, a group chat, they have a chat on WhatsApp, mm. and they call it Los Primos, the cousins, the, group wow. chat. And they all, oh. they, they, they chime in, they chime in. So, Dieguito, you know, Marcela, I don't know if you, if you know, Diego's sister. Marcela, Diego's sister, I remember, yeah. yes. We went to high school Dude. together. We all went to Coconut Creek oh. High. And, what? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, it was, it was, uh, we all were part of that high school. It was Carlos. And Dieguito at that time was little, and I still remember Marcel and him going at it, you know, because <laughs> <they were, laughs> it was a brotherly love they had, and it was always like joking around and playing around. It was, it was, we used to walk together from school and, and even, you know, take rides from school and just to watch them. I saw them actually a few months ago in November. I want to say, where it's uh, see Diego, see the whole family all over again at a special event. And it was just a blessing, man. You know, brought back a lot of memories, uh, a lot of emotions, because it's a family that even though we kind of didn't see each other for a while, but they always left a beautiful, um, what we call a beautiful... Um, An impact. In you they had An always impact in heart, yes. Because they always stuck together. They have always stuck together, you know. I, I knew Wait, Diego. It's I, knew, I, knew, how, I knew Diego's wife, yeah. How united. That, that, that family is very united. Very you know, united. Uh, yeah, that family. My wife's family is very united. Reminds me of my my family, my dad's side of the family. They're very mm. united. They wow. remind me a lot of that side of the family. You know? Yeah. Pero, and it's, it's, it's an example to follow. I mean, you know, I'm sure like every other family, they have their their separation. But believe me, most of the time when you ah. see them, they're a very close, united family. And they're very dearly loved. Very dearly loved. And they, they had a big impact. I used to attend all their parties and be able to sing on top of the Oscar de Leon lyrics. And, and they gave me that opportunity. And, and it grew up from there, man. It grew up from there. It started to um, come in me and, and, and until the moment where I finally decided that, um, you know, that I was going to follow Christ and within that moment. Actually, I'm going to go back a little more. Now I'm going to tell you the where Dennis Enrique first band that he joined, and that was uh, Leo Jordan's Chare band. Leo Jordan is actually uh, also part of that family. He was a yeah, musician, yeah, yeah. And um, I still remember the day that um, he moved down from New York City out of an apartment here in Coral Springs. And um, while there, uh, I he didn't want to do anything with music. He was like, he was done because he was burned out, I guess, in New York, you know, the scene and everything. You know, New York was a big salsa scene. So he came down, basically, he, he sold everything in New York and just came down to, 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 to Florida. And while he was there, I like, Carlos, I'd like to meet Leo because Carlos will, owe me, Carlos will always show me the record that Leo did, Comulata. He will always show me that. I would say, oh, I want to meet Leo. Yeah, but he doesn't want anything to do. Man, just take me over there. <laughs> so I still remember going to Coral Springs right there in Sanford Road and walking into the apartment where Leo and Marlene lived, along with Marisol, you know, uh, and, and the other girls that were there. Maritza. And... Maritza, yes. And just to get there, and, and he was in the room, like, kind of like, I said, man, I thought that this, guy, this guy didn't want, want nothing to do with music. And when I got there, he was sitting there with his piano, like, kind of waiting for me. And he just started to play Montuno. Montuno, you know, and he goes, oh, really, Danny? Hey, mucho gusto, Leo. Hey, a pleasure meeting you. I was, you know, I was trembling. I was scared because he's a professional. Yeah. And he goes, all right. And Carlos told me you like to sonar, which means improvise. I said, I got a little something there. And he said, okay, do it on top of this. And obviously, you know, when you're in front of a professional, the correction begins, you know. And I was just, ha I was happy with the opportunity to be there. And then we had a group of guys that we used to hang out at this place called Ballroom. It was a famous Colombian. It actually reopened recently about a year ago. Oh, really? It's called Ballroom. Yes, it, it reopened again in the city of Davie. And uh, a big madhouse salsa gathering that got there. And 
So we got some guys that were from there, and we introduced each other, and we said, hey, let's form a band. So Leo said, man, I don't think I, I want to do this again. This is a lot of responsibility, you know, a lot of rehearsal. A lot of people don't want to rehearse today. So Leo, um, you know, within time, I was able to convince Leo to, to join the band. So it was a, still remember, I still remember it was Leo, this guy named Willie. He was a conga player from New York, too. We got together. We, we did a couple of practices. But within that practice, there was always, you know, one thing about musicians that you will know, especially in the salsa scene, is that everybody's always better. Everybody's always better than somebody else. So they, they, they had that feeling. And so there was a little, you know, a what, um, a what rhythm we want, other than salsa that we wanted to bring, a style, I would say, more of a style of what we wanted to do. Um, the other guy wanted more of a Cuban style. Um, Leo was more like, Yo, you got to think about, you know, you got Colum- if you Who are you playing for? Yeah, you playing for Colombians? Right. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, you play a lot of people. And, you know, you say, so you're playing for a lot of Colombians. And Colombians, you have a, you got to have a mix. Because Colombianos, los Cali, le gusta la salsa. Los de Barranquilla, le gusta la pastita, le gusta el vallenato, le gusta la cumbia. Los de, los de Medellín, mix, mix both. I mean, they, they like they like cumbia and they also like salsa. So who who were we approaching? And basically, Ballroom, if you know, Ballroom was a place of Colombians. It was pure Colombians. Bogotanos de todo, había ido Rolo, Caleños, Paisas, all types. So, you know, um, disagreement happened, but at the end of the day, you know, Leo ended up, keep, Leo ended up everybody take, take more of Leo's side because it was, a great, it was the right ingredient to bring in to what we wanted to do. And we started a band called Chare. And Chare was, for many years, for many years, uh, a big part of this inner city we play for um we play many areas in miami we did a lot of mostly we're a local band here in in, in south florida miami kendall we used to play a lot in those um outdoor farms in, in kendall we used to play a lot out there on sundays and it was just a blessing you know the opportunity that leo gave me leo gave me the opportunity to become a front man in the band i wasn't the best you know, I still say today I'm not, I'm not the best singer. I just I got the ingredient that God has given me, but um, but I was able to to develop in that band, and um, it wasn't until um, that same time frame with band members coming in and out of Chare, of Leon's band, I met a person by the name of Gamaliel Reyes. Uh, Gamaliel Reyes is a Puerto Rican descent musician from Rio Piedras, and young guy he was 16 when I met him. And we just kicked it off right away. And what made us kick it off immediately was because we're both believers. You know, believers. Uh, I was a believer to a certain point. He was a he was a involved musician in church, but he also played for famous bands like for Lefty Perez. You know, uh, Justo Betancur. I mean, at that time, Lefty Perez, Celia Cruz, with him and wow. So we, I was able to unite with with Gammy, Colin Gammy, El Compadre, and. Uh, as 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 my exit came through Leo's band, he was kind of like waiting. He was like there waiting for me to meet another world, and that was Salsa Cristiana, you know. And, and that's when, through him, I was able to go to attend my first salsa, my first Christian salsa concert in Miami. And this was uh, this was the what time? What what, what year? That what year frame, was this that you, that you that were exiting Leo's band? Lil's band, I was exiting, if I'm not mistaken, oh, wow, it was about 1997, 98. At know, this point, uh, you were I, already I, a Christian? I was a Christian, you know, but also... You were raised secondary. Christian, or were you raised Christian? I was raised I was Christian, Christian. I, yes, I was, I, I was raised Christian. Uh, in fact, I have the pleasure today to have that foundation, which is my grandmother, who lives with me today, at 100 years old, it's a blessing, so I, I, I take care of... Um, Grandma and I take care of uh, my mom as they both, you know, they're both still moving around, you know, and they're the foundations for what we are today. So, yeah, so in that moment, it, it, it was, uh, I, it, I was a Christian, but my heart was all about, you know, salsa music and, and musica tropical, you know. So kind of, we, we will say that I had one feet more on the other side than, than on the church, but when I met Gammy, you know, he brought me to my first concert. I was able to see for the first time. I remember arriving at this church, 
um, around 1998, I was arriving at this church and there was a band that was setting up. And the guy, bro, you got to see this guy's live. But you know how Christians are, you know, we like to sit on the back. We don't like to sit up front, you know. Oh, yeah. When we first started, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so you kind of sit on the back. But then that they day. Rasa Cruzao. They they Rasa Rasa Cruzao. Cruzao. Exactly. <laughs> so that, that day we just decided, you know, Gabby goes, no, let's go sit up front. Wait till you hear this band. This is like El Gran Combo de la Musica Cristiana. Yeah. And I said, uh, I said okay. So we went up front. And I remember um, a whole bunch of people started to arrive, and they were from El Hogar de Nacer. Hogar de Nacer was a um, rehabilitation for guys that, you know, had issues with, with substance. Uh, mm-hmm. And that that particular was very popular here. So the owner of that, the 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 lead of that of that um, Hogar, of, um, Hogar de Menacer was a guy by the name of Bobby Rosario. Bobby Rosario basically was other than Richie Ray and Bobby Cruz, but Bobby was one of the first ones to bring a timbal inside the church. So it, it's a story that goes up and down. But um, but um, but I remember him arriving and I said, "Oh, there's Bobby and, and his boys," because he arrived with bands packed of people that he had in this house, this rehabilitation home, and brought them over to special events. Right. So we we sat there. And all of a sudden, the band, the band just said, okay, we're going to do a small sound check. And when that band kicked off that sound check, man, oh, tu sabes lo, los, the, goosebumps. Oh, the goosebumps came up because cuando uno, es, cuando uno es, escucha esto, yo no soy músico de profesión, no lo soy. Yo lo que sé es componer y, y, y tengo un, una facilidad que Dios me ha dado para poder cantar o expresarme, you know? Uh, you're, you're very humble, bro. Okay, let me tell you, you're, you're, you're super humble. Okay? Listen, I listen to your music and, and you you sound amazing. So uh, <laughs> you're, 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 you are extremely humble. And, and I love that. I love that. But no, no, no. You, you, at least to me, you sound professional. But yeah. it could be because I'm, I don't know better. But to me, you sound, you sound amazing to me, man. No, I listen no. to your music and you, you could be, I can, you're somebody that's, you're easy to listen to. And you're easy to listen to, so great. All the glory of God, man. It's just, you know a lot of a lot of singers that came out. Thank you, my brother. You know, it's all it's all of it's, it's, it's a gift. It's a gift. And uh, I mean, you know, most of, most of the songs that I've done, basically, God has given to me, has given them to me. And um, so, in in, in in that in that, you know, hay una cosa que se llama el sentimiento, ¿me entiende? Y esa música a mí me da sentimiento. Yo cuando se trata de la música salsa, yo Yo me inspiro. Cuando me inspiro, God has, God has given me a gift of, of taking out melodías and then melodies, and I go ahead and bring it to an arranger. Whoever I'm going to do the arrangement with, I do a lot with them. Um, at that time, I used to work a lot with Andy Guzman. And I'm going to take you there very soon with Gammy. With Gammy, I composed a lot of things together. In fact, in one of Gammy's first albums, well, I, I did. I, I wrote two songs and we sat in the studio to three, four o'clock in the morning in Alibaba, which is an Opalaca. You know, that's a bad neighborhood. You know, and, and Opalaca, it, just to yeah. sit there. Yeah, it was, it was, it was no joke, man. So imagine leaving there at four o'clock and you got all these people. You know, todo lo, la gente pues que desafortunadamente eh, tienen yeah. situaciones, they have issues of, of, of drug addiction and drug dealers are there too. So at that time, so. Going back to, to that moment, you know, uh, I started listening to Kerubin. We're at the concert now. And that band gets, I assume, if you remember this band called Kerubin, Kerubin, Miguel Cruz y su orquesta Kerubin. What an amazing band. I mean, from the moment they started, you know, what we call a finque swing, you know, a finque is basically the band was tight, you know. Those cats started playing. It was, they had no, como se llama, they, you couldn't defer them from big bands that are out there, you know, because they had their taste. And just watching them that day, man, just fulfilled my heart. And I said, wow, I want to start doing this. I want to start singing for the Lord, you know. And that's when I met, through Gammy, I met Bobby Rosario. And and I started attending Bobby Rosario's church. And most of the time I, I was attending because I wanted to get close to the salsa scene more, you know, recording studio and everything. And that's when I got together with Gammy one night and we just started 
I'm writing and I wrote my first track, uh, Yano Ya Estoy Solo. And what an amazing track, man. Just to uh, you know, I had my all my all my files and all my um rookie things of being in the studio with that song with Danny producing it. Kike Sanchez was on piano from Peru. Uh, it was just amazing, man. And just to be in the studio, man, I I, I remember being a rookie just coming out and just saying, hey, man, you know, I'm going to the studio, so it's sound because, you know, I will always hear my friends, you know, who are top musicians say the same thing. No, I you, uh, estoy, tú sabes, llegando al estudio. What we call Guille, you know, it was always, but just to say that, you know, I was coming from the studio recording, it, it was it was a, a big deal for me, you know, because it was my first time, you know, you're, you're like a little kid. You know? Of course. And that's And that's when everything began for me in Christian music. And I met Bobby, and I still remember Bobby walking into, he would walk up to church service, we'll walk into the studio. And through Bobby, I met a special friend by the name of Andy Guzman. Andy Guzman was, uh, if you guys in the salsa scene know Luis Enrique, Luis Enrique is, is a top singer of salsa music. And he's from Nicaragua, but he was like one of those first outsiders that actually kicked it off, hit it big time in Puerto Rico. And that band that was former in Puerto Rico was of Andy Guzman. So I met him because I wanted him to do an arrangement for me, an arrangement for me to go into Bobby's album, to go into, yeah, to go into Bobby's album that he was doing with Papa Rivera, you know? And, um, and, and one day Andy just asked me, he called me after I gave him a check for the arrangement. He called me at my house and he said, hey, Dennis, why are you doing this single for Oh, I want to include it in Bobby's in Bobby's album, you know, so people can get to know me. He goes, but what if we just do a whole album? And I said, I don't have the money, you know, because a whole album at that time, a production will cost cheap, cheap album, you know, a cheap production will cost about fifteen thousand dollars, you know. But even wow, even the price, yes. So he goes, well, let's not worry about that now. Let's go ahead and start doing. Let's do this track. I'm going to do another one for you. And and just get you get get yourself together, at this amount of money so we can start paying paying the brass, right? I said, well, how much do you need for the brass? And he gave me the amount, and I went and I borrowed that money from my uncle. I said, bro, I'll give it back to you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, yes, with with Andy, man, when he started arranging, and all of a sudden those two tracks were done, he goes, we're recording this evening, but that evening. All these musicians from New York were coming down. Little Johnny Ribeiro, you know, Sammy Gali, Gammy was there. Um, all these musicians from here in New York City were, were here because it was a big festival that was happening where today the where the um today where the roller coaster used to be on Griffin Road in Sterling. In oh man, yeah, where yeah, where, where the wooden roller coaster was, yeah, where the wooden roller coaster, uh... yeah. And, and, and now it's and, like an open every, mall. Every yeah. yes, every year they used to do a Puerto Rican festival there, and all those musicians really? were coming down. Yes, sí, en la, en la, en la fiesta patronales de de Broward County, something like that. <clears throat> so at that time, um, all these musicians came down. One of them was Little Johnny Rivero. Little Johnny Rivero is Eddie Palmieri's conga player today, and he's also done things on his own, played with Frankie Ruiz in his hype up days. Um, and all these machines come, he goes, yo, all these machines are coming that we're ready to record. Man. And I still remember that night. We were there from eight o'clock that night to eight o'clock in the morning recording. <laughs> Musicians were coming in and out. In and out of that studio. Just that feeling, man. It was, it was uh, and watching my first two tracks being recorded, I'm like, wow. Obviously Bobby wasn't happy because that single was supposed to go into his album. But he, but he understood at the end because he understands that God's plan, no one can change. God just starts putting things in your way. Me, a mí se me subieron todos los polos. O sea, eh, eh, la mente la tenía llena porque, imagínate, here I am starting my first, we're moving on this, mu on this music scene, but I'm starting off on a good right foot. Yeah. And at, once those two, those two singles were done, uh, there was a label that he knew that Andy knew from from New, from New York from Pennsylvania called BL One Music, and they decided to finish up the whole album. Um, the first album was called Masculine Amigo, which you guys can find on YouTube. 
It has songs like um, Más que un amigo, El Madero. Um, you find Dennis Enrique and you will see, see the album. That album was amazing, man. It was it was mixed by Richard Perez, a great dear friend of mine. Um, we had Apo Luca on piano, you know. We had Andy Guzman. We had Berto Arnos from Colombia. We had Dante Vargas from Peru. Uh, we recorded in Puerto Rico, Chicago, New York, and Miami. Wow, and man. It was recorded everywhere. And, and that album cool. came out, what, 97? 2007. 2007. Oh, wow. So this is already, a, so this is, in the, this has been something in the worst for 10 years. In the worst for more That's than about, 10 years. Just about. Close to, to, close to 20 in about three years from now, yep. And uh, it was just an amazing album. If you guys can listen to it, the mixing, the, the arrangement, um, the great Piro Romero, who is now with Jesus. He, he's resting Piro Romero. Uh, amazing Puerto Rican singer and 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 sonero who was able to write the improv impro the impro the the what we call the the track improvisions. Uh, that's when I came. To, the, the the reason why the album is very special to me because that's when the gift of com of, of being a composer came out. The or the guy gave me right there. Yeah. In that in that album, I I wrote six songs. I still remember being in Andy's house. And, and I, I said, this is a song I wrote. He goes, well, from now on, you're going to write the rest of the song. And I said, I can't do that. You're crazy. You know? He goes, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You can do it. You know? I mean, he, he, when I used to go to his house, he used to fix me up food and bring me into his room. And, 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 and I would sing everything from top to bottom. He would do the corrections. It was just amazing work, man, and what he did in my life. And, and you know, if you're watching, you're Andy, I love you. Um, yeah, this wouldn't be, I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't because of you, you know, and you, man of God, um, our families really got together. Um, it was just a blessing, man, and that, that, doing that whole album was a gift, you know, getting props from Papo Luca was for me a big thing. He used to like my, the way I compose, you know, but if you listen to the album, the album is available on YouTube. It never made it to you at that time because Digital downloads were not big. They probably could get it done today. I don't know. That's with the label, but but it was a, one of my the first album that I recorded. The first album I recorded called Masque Un Amigo. You know, if you guys can listen to it, it's an amazing. And 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 then that's when the adventure began. You know, that album, of course, had 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 its um you know moments of immaturity because um here I am, you know, uh, a young young guy, first timer you know, recording with all these big dudes. And so all that went up to my head. You know, I was, I was, I wasn't, I guess I would say now I'm ready to receive things. At that time I wasn't ready because I, I would arrive at places and, you know, no matter, I guess I'll probably say that I probably, I, I haven't been the only one that's been through that. But, you know, you go through your um, immature moments, you know, you feel like you're absolutely. Happy, you know? You know, and for me, that was, it was big. I would walk into festivals and I say, well, wait till you hear my band. <laughs> wait till you hear Andy's band backing me up, you know. So it was, it, it, it was those moments of immaturity too that, that, that came out of there too. And it was, it was, and bro, a, it was and, a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, when, and, and that happens. I mean, whenever, whenever God is using you and you're being used, el enemigo se mete. And yes. And he's going to use pride. He's like, look at everything you're doing. Look how good you are. Look at this. And yeah, pride gets in. But oh, hey. So yeah. I, I yeah, appreciate and, you being on. You, you being. You, you being have to because. Uh, you know, honest. There, there's people that stop. There's people that stop because of situations like that. But everything is part of the growth. You know. Everything Absolutely. is part of the growth. And, and, you know, in that moment, you know, I was. You know, I will arrive and everywhere we, we, we will attend. I mean, that album went to Puerto Rico. All the top stores wanted it because at that time you were able to sell CDs. For those of you that don't know what CDs are, but, but yeah, they were, you know, you, you, that was part of the business. Part of the business is you sold CDs. You went to the store, you and you bought and you sell it to them for like four, eight, five dollars, four dollars a, a CD, and they will sell it for fifteen, and you know. You make the profit from there, or or, or twenty dollars, depending on what the album was. 
And that album had its moments, you know, it, it was well received. But like everything else, like, you know, part of the immaturity came in and then part of the business part also kicked in. And that pretty much um, brought a lot of things down. So my contract with VL1 was terminated. Um, my relationship was affected because uh, the owner with uh, with Andy being the producer, it wasn't there. So it, it, things that happened, the immature today, Chris Lord, you know, um, Ariel Bellas, who was a great, he was the owner of all this. He's a dear friend of mine, and we talked, you know, most of the time just to say we love each other, you know. And But the friendship is there because we understand that this is more than an album, you know. This is about we're, we're, we're godly men, you know. We, 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 we worship the same God, and that God that we worship doesn't want to see us separated, you know. And the same with Gammy, the same with, with Andy. You know, when we see each other, we're, we're able to have that moment, you know, it was a, we just it was a very beautiful time in our lives, um, you know. So many things came after that. Then my second album came out was um uh, was called Otro Nivel. That album we did on our own label, and that's has eight songs. You can find that also on iTunes, Spotify. I also find it on YouTube if you want to listen to it. It's called Denis Enrique Otro Nivel. And then obviously you know um, times so, of time situ- hard situations came down. Obviously you you were there when. My separation happened. You know, huh. it was it was a very tough moment. Um, it was kind of like a I did like a five year, six year layover where I just forgot about everything. And and you know, the good thing is I, I always look at if you look at Solomon, Solomon, Solomon will never worship another god. He will always worship the same god, no matter what his issues were. And um, well, I was able to go ahead and uh, one day during those six years after those six years happened. God was able to wake me up that night. Uh, three, I still remember it was 3.43 in the morning. And woke me up with a song called Contigo. And I feel, which is, I'm sure you heard. And yeah. I just started at that now. Remember, times had changed now because before you used to sell CDs. Now, today's world, we do singles. You know? Yeah. We, we, we do singles. And, and, and that was my first single coming out. I did it with a great... Man of God named Milton Sesenton, Contigo open barriers because he was done during the pandemic, you know. And in that moment, I was able to get together great musicians like my friend Danny Fierro, who also attends Vertical, and Danny Fierro and uh, and uh, uh, Milton Sesenton, who was the producer and arranger. Uh, my great dear friend Pastor Puchi Colon, who I love dearly. If you guys know Puchi Colon, Puchi Colon, uh, man, that guy Puchicolón. is yeah. the real deal, man. He's the real deal. And um, which is going on, uh, we got again from musicians from we did everything, we did everything, we did a video together for that song, and because no one could come out, so we we had to go ahead and do videos from inside our houses. You know, I actually ended up going to Colorado and doing the video in, in Colorado, the, my the, my singing part in in Pucci's house. And we kind of used it as a moment to get together, and we say, hey, you know what, let's record it now. You know, <laughs> so it was it was a blessing contigo. Hit the bar- and you know, broke barriers. I, you know, I, that song for me not only was a, a, a an awakening for me and 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 a, and a and a moment of restoration, but it was also a moment of of you know uniting with with people and and forgiveness had to take its place. Obviously, it was very important, very important. And um, contigo was and then it was like Puerto, uh, contigo and contigo ended up in Mexico. In the secular stations, people obviously, for those of you that don't know, when we sing out to Mexico, when we reach out to Colombia, you know, all these publicists they always ask for for money in advance to open it, to open the 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 to start kicking the hitting the song over there. But we continue was different because of the message it had. You know, you know, non Christians were actually dedicating it to their wives. Contigo, contigo. But they had no idea until they, they mm-hmm. heard, you know, you know, they heard, you know, the the improvisation, the the part of of um of what we call the improvisation part, where it says, you know, tu depositas la paz, entiende, eh, en mi necesidad, um, eh, todo lo puedo contigo, you know, uh, those things like that, because it comes out of out of um, um Philippians four thirteen. So when all that comes out, they're like, bro, that song is for, for the Lord. I say, yeah, 
you know, I had no idea, you know, this is a non-Christian service. It was good at the time, but it was a good, it was a, it was a, it was to open the doors. You know what I'm saying? So it was a great song, man. We, we were able to um, uh, break, break a lot of barriers. You know, I still remember doing my first live. I never done a live on Facebook before. It was my first live, which was like, bro, you got to do your first live. I said, well, I don't, I'm not good at doing it. You got to do it, man. I'm telling you. And I remember that first live, you know, it was like um, close to 800 um, people coming in, you know, you know, like where you been? You know? Wow! <laughs> so it was a blessing, man. And um, you know, from there, um, you know, I, I, this is where I'm at right now. You know, from there we did Masaya, and we did Dame tu Corazón. Um, we did videos in Medellin, and so throughout all that moment, it's restoration time. You know, waking up again, feeling this again. You know, to 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 sing for Jesus and 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 um. It was a moment of um, forgiveness, you know, um, a moment of um, of getting it back together again, you know. And, and that you you use a you use a, a very very important word, and that is mm -hmm. forgiveness. Forgiveness. People don't understand how powerful forgiveness is. Forgiveness goes side by side with freedom. Amen. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, that's what frees us. Yes. That's part of freedom and. And for those that don't know, there is a there is a program or there is a a curriculum at Vertical Church, as along with other churches. But we did it in Vertical we did Church. It. Yeah. Freedom. I led that. I led that after Pastor Verge. I I served under Pastor Verge doing Freedom. I co-led with Pastor Verge, and then I led it for a number of semesters. So, wow. One of the main, one of the main, main things about freedom, forgiveness. Yes, freedom cannot yes. happen without the forgiveness. core. That's the core. That's the core. The core. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you were able to find forgiveness and do it. Y con eso te, el Señor te, te pudo usar otra vez. But without forgiveness, the Lord, you're stuck. Without forgiveness, you're really stuck. You're stuck. Yes, yes. And you know, one of the things that you know. Something that once I was told in, because I did freedom three times. Um, one for my first time with Harold. Harold, remember <laughs> our good friend Harold? Harold Pagano, love you, bro. That's my brother, but I love you, bro. I miss so, him, bro. I miss, I Pablo, miss Harold, man. Pablo Guerrero, we, we, oh, no. we were with um, Edwin, who's still my brother today. You know, oh, Edwin. man, Edwin. Edwin Torres, amazing, you know, and, and we and we did that, we did that um, freedom. And that was my first time. It was, it was good. But the second time I was able to co-lead with, uh, like you did, I was able to co-lead with Pastor Cesar Prada, you know. And uh, I still remember Pastor Cesar. You know, Pastor Cesar is always on the correction part. He's always saying, you know, this doesn't mean that, you know, that, you know, you're going to have great days, you know. And he'll say, but you know where to go when things, are, when, when, when things are not going the right way. Even though you did freedom, you know where, you know, you know where to go. You know where the refuge is at. And, and that's where it's been for me, you know. Um, just a few months ago, I was going through a tough moment. And the first thing I remember was the brotherhood, you know, and the phone numbers we share. And I remember calling Edwin, you know. I said, Edwin, man, I'm going through this. This is, this, this is mind-killing, you, know, you know. This is not, I'm not being a great Christian right now. And the best thing about that brotherhood of freedom that we have, you and I, Pablo, and it's a way to reach back and say, and go back to our brothers and say, oh, okay, brother, all right, you know. So he was able to listen first, you know, be able to listen and be able to understand me. And then he said, I gone through those moments and I said, oh, man, I haven't been the only one, thank God. So, you know, we're back again, you know, <laughs> we're doing, it just brings you back again, gets you to, to the right path all over again to walk stronger than ever, man, stronger than ever. And um, it's 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 a journey, but it's a great journey, man. It's it's it's, it's an amazing journey that we're able to to um, have and the friendship, the connection. Look, you're in Texas now, you know, but we still keep that friendship, you know, that togetherness. My son always remembers you. I remember your kids, who are big Dolphin fans, and you know, a big U.S. Look, 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 look at my U.M. shirts, bro. Hey, bro, right. I'm, sport I'm here in Florida, <laughs> yep. bro. I'm here in Texas, but I'm still support my Florida teams, man. 
So she goes, you am <laughs> in my office at work. I have a big banner that says Miami wow. Dolphins, Super Bowl Seven, Super Bowl Six, Super Bowl Seven, Super Bowl Eight. Right. Hey, Seventy-two and seventy-three. Yes, sir. Yep. So oh, was it? I haven't experienced one yet, man. Because I'm, I'm the same here, man. I haven't experienced it yet. <laughs> you, you're one year older than me, so last yeah. time the Dolphins won a Super Bowl, you and I weren't even born yet. <laughs> no, no, we, I can you know, fighting back and telling people, uh, well, you've never been undefeated. And I think if they only knew that I wasn't even thought about yet, you know, but um, but yeah, man, I guess we'll make it someday, <laughs> you know, maybe. But it's funny, yeah. you mentioned Pastor Caesar that you call it on the past. Uh, when I when I took freedom, it was in Spanish, and Caesar was my leader. I was, when I was a participant, wow! it was led by Pastor Caesar, and I did it in Spanish. And yeah, and Pastor Caesar is no joke. Pastor Caesar will get up and make sure. A ver, escribiste el libro, escribiste el libro. A ver tu libro. Checking your homework. Yes, he did. Um, <laughs> hermanos, me tienen triste, me tienen triste. Me tienen triste, que no necesito tu tarea. <laughs> so yes. I made sure I made, I did my homework every week, man. I was like, I didn't want to be the one being called out. Man. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, and that we, class it was in that class with Sergio was one of them was Pastor Pastor Birch's um um father in law, Manolo, you know, and Pastor Caesar will come around and check his homework. He'll check Lenny Fiemo's homework. I remember those. Those were, <laughs> you have to those were homework, and, I, and he did that also with when we were doing the the, the marital the marital uh class. Uh-huh. Led by him and, and 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 Pastor Claudia, my wife and I were were part were participants, and he would come <laughs> around, check everybody's homework on the on the mar- in the marriage book, and then afterwards, my wife and I co- led co led with Harold wow. and Nitsa. Wow, we led we co led together a premarital life group. I wow. well, we we made so many friends throughout the years, and let, let me tell you something. Like you said. It's so important to stay connected. Yes. So important. Yes. And yes. now here in Texas, we've made some more friends. And but I never forget my friends that you know, yes. I'm still in contact with Chip. I'm in contact, you know, Amazing and I'm glad that you and I Chip. he's awful. Well, the guy is special, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy's special, so he expresses know, himself yeah. and, and and that's what we want. And we and there's an example about Chip is that he's not afraid to express himself how he feels in the moment. Yeah, you know, and, and that's and that's a lesson for us. For me, he's been a lesson. We only got together one time. I'm supposed to be getting with him, but you know how it is with time here. But but I I promise right here to make the effort to get together with Chip. You know, to have great relationships. That's what you want. You want to build great relationships, and that's the way yeah, we hold and, each and, other and strong. I, and I need to and I need to make more of an effort also to get to to. To call more often to my my friends from yes. it, it had been a while since you and I re, has reached out to each other. Amen. Yes. I'm glad yes. I'm, and and I'm glad that that we got reconnected. I had your number when you sent me your number. You already had this number. I have. Yes. I, I never took your number off my phone. I have my <laughs> phone. I have so your number was there when I dialed it. Your name popped up right away. I, go, I already had this number. Of course, I had this number. I go. Amen. I never took it off. You know, I never I had it either. When I saw I had Ortega with the capital A at the end, I'm like, oh, then no wonder I couldn't get on the side. I was like trying to figure out why it wasn't coming out. But when you called me, it was there. So with name and everything. And then, I mean, yesterday was, yesterday this, this interview began, we were like in, in awe with all the people that were connected. We didn't even know that. But when we were vertical. We didn't even know that we were connected to to the um, Ramos and, and-, and Andrea Yola and well, amazing, Andrea. Andrea, I remember Andrea one when we first when we first got into Facebook. When I first got into Facebook. She's we we became friends on Facebook. She became friends with my wife. She saw pictures of my wife and me with family, and she was, "Hey, how are you connected to these people? Well, these are my cousins. These are or these. You know, well, I'm cousins with." With so with, with with Marisol and I'm cousin with Carlos Eduardo and and Margarita is my grandmother. Dude, we go wow. play, we will go play bingo at Leo's house, at Leo's and Marlene's wow. house. Wow, because you yeah, know they yeah. play bingo every Friday. Yeah, I remember bingo and, and they yeah I remember those and and they also do el, el sancocho. <laughs> 
bro, de Sancocho, el año nuevo, bro. El año nuevo, el año nuevo de Sancocho, en casa de Dimas. Yeah. Their Sancochos are awesome. Wow. So, saludos a la familia Rama, a la familia de Jordán, a la Jordan. familia de Tobar. You know, saludos a, a, a nuestra familia, which lo extrañamos. We miss, we miss Fridays. Extrañamos los viernes el Juan yeah. Bingo con, con la familia. You know? And, and I'm, 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 yeah, man. <laughs> So, bro, so, 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 wow. so you, you say you got to Colombia, you visit Colombia, you perform in Colombia, you, you told me before we went on, you, you got to Costa Rica, you know, so you Puerto Rico. So, you, you've been able, the Lord has blessed you with, with performance. Yes. Quite, a, quite around. So, you've been quite, you've been around. I've been around, you know, all glory to God. Um, Amen. You know, again, I, I think there was um, when those moments uh, Colombia was a big door for me because uh, especially Edgar Betancourt, who might be listening right now, Edgar is a, a Colombian uh, fiscal, and, but he also has a radio over there called tropiradio.net where he um, he um, streams um, Christian salsa 24-7 and he has a show yeah. every Saturday and it's um, He was the one who opened the doors for us over there to me and Puchi Colón back in 2011. He took us to a concert. It was called the first um, Salsa con Mensaje Festival. The concert never happened um, because of ticket sales, obviously, you know, but that that's part of life, you know. Uh, but it, the, 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 the stage he had prepared for that was at, at Jorge Isaac. Uh, but it was just, but ever since then, The music has opened more. The our music, Pucci, Pucci, and and among other guys, you know, Alex Morris, um, um, Ezequiel Colon, myself, Dennis Enrique, has opened. It, it got used to. It, we we thought it was it was like man, it was useless coming here. We came here for no reason, but man, seeing it today, it has opened a wider door because we are heard pretty much everywhere when it comes to Christian salsa. I don't yeah. like to call it Christian salsa. I will stick with Jeff Morales on this. I don't like we don't, I don't, he finally convinced me not to call it. He says it's just salsa with a great message, man. I mean, because sometimes we try to, you know, liberalize things, but, we, but we, it's, it's it's great music, man. It, it, it um, it's it's um, I wish it was people would, would put a little more ear into it because there's great music out there. Absolutamente. Um, salsa, salsa no, y, 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 y para lo que piensa que, que los cristianos somos aburridos. <laughs> yeah, los been... cristianos, oh, que aburridos son los cristianos. Man. Cristianos, Christians can party, bro. We can yeah. party. We, we just don't need all that alcohol. We don't, we don't drink, need to we get drunk. <laughs> we can definitely eat. Hey, our li I remember our life groups in Florida, man. Our life groups in Florida oh, for church. Yes. Bro, especially for freedom. We would yes. eat. And here we I'm part of a church. We're, we're with a church called Sea Life, Community Life Church. Wow. And we're not we're part of the Spanish ministry. Oh wow. Thank God, because well, they can nothing. Look, I love, I love my, I love my English community. I, I but how we can eat, bro. They can eat too, bro. But all the, the culture sure thing, thing is what, what is the what is the population? Mexicans in in in, in the church it, more. It mostly Mexicans. We do have we do have a uh, Venezolano. We have yeah. other. But it's mostly Mexicans. Mexicans and uh, pero, bro. Uh, I remember when our first Sunday there uh -huh. in the Spanish, right after church, it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, we were the pastor and they hicieron una, hicieron un menudo. Wow. Uh, which, which is a, which is a Mexican uh, soup dish with, with. Sí, sí. Con pollo, no? Menudo, well, no, no sé con qué era. Creo que era with pork. I think, with, I think mm -hmm. it was with pork. All I know is delicious, bro. Wow. For our Christmas Eve service, <laughs> our Christmas Eve service, after service, we picked that, bro. We all cooked. We all brought something. 
and all the guests were, were able hey, we we made sure they stayed and they stuck around and you know so we can eat bro I, I, that's the one thing we know we, we 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 can eat we can eat so Especially the Colombians like to play that game where they throw the thing to the frog and sapo. I think they love they playing. The I remember to... I remember playing that in, in Dimas' house. They have the yeah. frog in Dimas' sapo. house. Sapo. sapo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't know what sapo. With the little rings, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. try and make it inside the mouth or with the mouth yeah. that is the most points, and then every and it's by teams. I remember they used to play by teams. <laughs> so oh yeah. man, that was that that game was a lot of fun. I remember playing that game. La, I love playing dominoes. In la lechonera, la izquierda. <laughs> yeah, great times, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot, lot of good memories here. Hey, pre otra pregunta que, que I had for you. Yeah, Where, yeah, yeah. what's been one of your favorite? What's been your? You probably have many. Yeah. You, 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 probably, you can say all of it. Uh, what is your favorite? What's your favorite? What's been your favorite place to? That's a two sided question, actually. What's been your favorite place to, to favorite location to perform at? Okay. And what's your, what's been the most memorable? I think the most memorable one, I think it, it, it has been in Colombia at this place called Redentor. Um, it's in Cali, Colombia. It's a church. It's about an hour and a half from Cali. And we still, in fact, we were there last September. Um, but it's been the most memorable. 